Hello and welcome back to my channel. In my last video, I mentioned that Creality had sent me one of their brand new CR Ferret Pro scanners and I had an interesting project in the works that I'd be trying it out on. Well, this is that video. In the early 2000s, my friend Brian was working underneath a vehicle and got his index finger smashed between the frame and the jack stand of the vehicle that he was working on. Subsequently, removing the distal and medial of his index finger on his dominant hand. That incident granted him a fast pass and immediate membership to the Missing Parts Club. Brian's current employment is such that he uses his hands constantly through the day. Where it's been well over a decade since his unfortunate accident, and he's pretty well figured out how to complete all his daily tasks while missing the majority of his index finger, this makes him not exactly an ideal candidate for adopting and using a prosthetic device. Generally, you try to fit a patient within the first couple of months after swelling goes down and the amputation site has stabilized. Upper limb prosthetics have a significant rate of rejection by the patients, especially when dealing with a minor amputation like this. Once they're able to figure out their new normal without a prosthetic device, it's an awful hard sell to get them to see the need of a finger gadget that's now likely just to get in their way. That being the case, this is probably going to be more of a going out and special occasion type of device rather than an all day every day type of thing like the gear I use. Where he still has his proximal, I'm looking at designing and building him a device that's driven by the motion of his proximal relative to the palm and anchored by a wristband or something. When he moves what's left of his index, it'll cause the prosthetic finger to curl just like his natural fingers. It's a super neat project, but it's also one that's been done several times here on YouTube. I usually recommend a project named Danger Finger by Nicholas Bookins to people when they reach out to me about this type of device. Link in the description. It seems to work pretty well for most people, although it's not exactly the most anatomically similar device. But it serves a purpose and it's pretty easy to fabricate using a consumer grade 3D printer. Since Creality sent me their new CR Ferret Pro Scanner, I decided this would be a perfect opportunity to try it out in a real world scenario. The setup process was super easy and intuitive. You start by downloading the current version of both the software and firmware from the Creality website. After you run the installer and connect the scanner to your laptop, you'll have the opportunity to update the firmware for the scanner unit itself. This is an important step and shouldn't be overlooked. There have been some major improvements with the software since the previous version, especially if you're going to be running the scanner from your cell phone. That software has basically seen a complete rewrite and you no longer have to sideload the APK file. The app is now available for download on the Play Store. Also now, for the first time ever, Creality Scan is available for iOS in their app store. The Windows version is pretty much the same as it was. That is, until you get to the processing section. Now you have the ability to adjust the export resolution as well as a couple other options. Of course, you still have the option to go with one button processing if the default settings will work for your project. Another new feature of the laptop software is that it saves a copy of the raw scan so you can go back and reprocess the file in case you need to up the resolution or something. Overall, super solid. The software for the phone, on the other hand, is basically a whole new deal. It is so much better than the last time I looked at it. The last version got lost super easy and it spent a bunch of time buffering. Basically, it was available, but I would never use it because it was just too glitchy. So far, at least with the Android version, it's been super solid. The Wi-Fi bridge connects right away and I've had really good luck capturing scans with it with the new wireless option. The wireless feature is currently only available when scanning with your phone, but I'm sure it'll be available for your laptop in some future update. So after a bit of practice with the new scanner and figuring out the perfect offset distance and travel speed that I needed to maintain relative to the subject, I was all set for the next time Brian came by to the shop so I could ambush him and take a scan of his residual limb. I didn't have to wait very long since I was doing a couple projects for him in the background. So here I am with Brian using the Creality CR Ferret Pro Scanner to scan his hand. 
I ended up repeating the process a couple times while he was there, just so I could be sure that I got a scan that I was going to be happy with. One without any weird artifacts, but really, it wasn't necessary. The first scan turned out really clean, and I used the one button processing function to take it from scan to OBJ. You could choose to do it step by step and adjust the elements of the scan. You can increase or decrease the amount of resolved triangles, you can adjust the resolution, or whether or not to retain the color data. For what I'm doing, and since I'm not scaling anything, I just use the standard configuration for the output. That always gives me more than enough triangles to work with. Next time I do this, I might move things around on the scanner unit itself and add back the little 2x2 LED block that I was using with the old version of the scanner just to give me a little more contrast and shadows in the scan. Something that's pretty cool that's included with the new setup is a couple of sheets of these stick-on targets. If you're having issues getting your model to scan properly, you can use these to help the scanner from getting lost. Especially if you're trying to scan something large or something that just doesn't have a bunch of irregular shape to it. Of course, I usually just use Sharpie marks, but it's pretty cool to see them include these sticker dots in the new setup. The software processed the scan pretty quickly. From start to finish, it only took about 4 minutes, and the scan was right around 600 images. From there, I brought it into Mesh Mixer and used the Plane Cut tool to remove everything that wasn't related to the socket. After I was done with the Plane Cut, I moved to deleting individual groups of triangles. I needed to be sure to relieve the area on the socket on the palm side of things so when he bends his proximal to the closed position that isn't causing too much of a push at the base of the socket. With this kind of device, suspension is always an issue. You just don't have a lot of real estate with this type of situation. I'm considering using some sort of compression band in order to get enough suspension so that this thing isn't just falling off. So now that I have just about all the excess triangles removed, and the design pretty well refined, I select just the edge and use the uniform tool to smooth the outside perimeter. Once I'm happy with the overall shape of the model, I use the offset tool and offset the body 3 millimeters to the outside. This gives me enough material that the print is going to be stable, and I should be able to actually mount something to it. This is super important if you're going to be using the print for the interface of your final device. Now that I have the model all prepped, I export the OBJ and open up the Creality Slicer. I go ahead and set it up for 100% infill with a brim. Because of the shape, I don't need to use really any supports. I can almost print this in vase mode. For now, I'm printing it in ABS, but for the final, I might go with the 95A TPU. I set the printer up and push go. And right about 30 minutes into discussing how to solve all the problems of the world, we had a first article to look at and to do a quick fit check. The fit was great, but needed to be just a bit tighter. One thing the scanner doesn't account for is the squishiness of the residual limb. So since he was up for hanging around a little bit longer, I set it up again and ran the print 95%. That print proved to be just a little bit too tight and he wasn't able to seat the socket far enough down on his residual limb. I ran the next one at 98% and Brian was super pleased with the fit. Something that still blows my mind is that the scanner is so accurate with its capture that I'm able to go from scan to print and the socket actually fits without having to do a bunch of trial and error and reference scaling. It's just amazing that the scanner can figure out exactly how big an inch is and be able to correlate that data into a printed object and have it be scaled true to life. I'll make an update video as I get further along in this project to bring you guys up to speed as to what I've come up with for him. If you're in the market for a scanner and want to try this new technology out, there's a link in the description. Creality has done a really good job setting up an ecosystem for digital fabrication with their printers, their filament, and now Scanner. As always, I'd like to thank everybody that's backing me on Patreon. Besides the studio upgrades and the occasional tool or fixture purchase, this is the type of thing that your contribution goes towards. Another little side quest update, the other day I received an email from PCBWay letting me know that the printed aluminum components that they're making for me have shipped and are on their way to me. I should be receiving them in about 10 days which is awesome. I'll do an unboxing for you as soon as I receive the box from DHL. 
That's about all I have for this video. Please remember to like, subscribe, share my videos, and if you have time, leave a comment in the comment section letting me know what you think of the project. It really does help with the algorithm. Thanks for watching.